All right, welcome back again, y'all. And this is the time of the time of the 206 Classic Radio. Morpheus Magnetic in the house. Peace and blessings, y'all. Once again, we're talking to Obi Ekbuna, who's a writer for the Zimbabwe's national newspaper, The Herald. And um, one of the first question we, that we were going to ask him is uh, how has Zimbabwe's land reclamation movement influenced South Africa slash Azania? Like Ghana was, 
Right. And so um, when you look at this concept of land, and then, of course, Zimbabwe was very aggressive on the question of land. Mm -hmm. And remembering when you now go back to 1979, after they had defeated arguably the, most po the second most powerful colonial army ever assembled on the African continent, mm -hmm. David did whip Goliath, to use a biblical term, on Easter Sunday, <laughs> and not being blasphemous to Christians, but mm -hmm. they won against all odds. The same way no one gave Haiti a chance to defeat the French, the same way that nobody gave um, Algeria a chance to to beat the French, the same way nobody gave Kenya a chance to beat the British. We've always dealt with odds that people deemed insurmountable. That's just who we are. That's what the fighting Africans, the African fighting spirit does for us. So Zimbabwe was able to prevail, but when they went to the negotiating table, it was called the Lancaster House Negotiations, and mm -hmm. the agreement was cemented by the Carter administration representing the United States government, cemented by the Thatcher administration representing colonial Great Britain. Between 1980 and 1990, Zimbabwe, um, the land was supposed to be transferred back to the indigenous people. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Five billion dollars was supposed to be put up so that the Rhodesians and British could either relocate mm -hmm. inside Zimbabwe, they could stay there, but they'd have accommodations that were more in harmony with their composition and makeup. So you wouldn't have two or three um, Caucasian farmers with a farm the size of the African neighborhood in Seattle, for example. Those days were over. <laughs> so, but when Carter, when Carter was defeated, Reagan came in and said he would not honor the negotiations. On the British side, Thatcher made some overtures in the right direction. Her replacement, John Major, made some overtures in the right direction. But the time, by, by the time the cheap carbon copy of uh, Bill Clinton, Tony Blair comes to power, he begins to talk openly about regime change. And right around this time, you're talking like the, the late 1990s, and the people who fought in that liberation struggle went to prison in that liberation struggle, were tortured in that liberation struggle, lost family members because of the involvement in the liberation struggle. Mm -hmm. They began to ask President Mugabe and ZANU-PF, when was the land issue going to be resolved? So